you know. I mean, we don't know everything that's going to be on the map. Of course, you've got, like, the Juno events that we've seen and the little uh, the thing that came out of the demo and stuff like that. So, I mean, we don't even know the extent of what side activities are even in the game at this point. So, we're just kind of... Do the, Juno, do, do the Juno events just reiterate the fact that we're playing as Desmond's son who's allied with Juno? She's someone that's going to be constantly there guiding you through this? I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? But I'm not sure, because it could be anyone. Because, like... Yeah. Mm, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. George, you were the skeptical one at first. Do you think it just makes more sense the more you think about it? What about what about it being, Des <laughs> it being, it being Desmond's son? Oh yeah, it makes sense. But she couldn't it be also her contacting Bayek because she needs Bayek in some way. She needs to be able to come I just don't see him. how she can contact Bayek through. Um, how, but she can't just contact Bayek through the yeah, animals. Yeah, because because I think yeah, well I, mean, I think the point no. is it's this it could be it could be the same way that Minerva contacted Ezio because that was from before well, those are the Vault. catastrophe. They left messages and, in secret yeah, places. Yeah, 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 exactly, and that's what I'm saying is that it could be like that, but I don't I don't think it is because as well it wouldn't be on the map saying Juno event like as no, if yeah. not. Juno left random messages all over Egypt for Bayek to find like for no reason. But I but I but I do think that Bayek will be contacted by First Civ. I think it'll be relatively early on in the game. I personally I think the storyline and the way I've thought about it since the game was kind of announced what he's doing, the way Ashraf talks about it, the way that there's this organization and like these there's these people and Bayek's, you know, meets, you know, whatever. He's trying to be very like, you know, cryptic with it. Um and I think what's gonna happen is Bayek's gonna he's gonna stumble across a temple. He's going to find a piece of Eden. I think that's where the snake Apparently. scene comes from. I think that's, uh, like, the beginning of the game, very early on. It's obviously is, a hallucination. Yeah, yeah. He, he fights the snake. He realizes it's a hallucination. He finds a piece of Eden, and then when he finds that or touches it, that's when, you know, a first sieve will appear, and there'll be a message, and he'll find out something like, you know, there's pieces of Eden throughout Egypt that these corrupt rulers are using to control the people, and he's going to have to kill all these people, and through that, he's going to end up forming the Brotherhood. And then he's as he's doing that, he's going to learn more about these pieces of Eden, more about the first civilization. He's going to become, you know, more wise. He's going to develop as a character. And do you think he'll fight against the first? I think the first civil will try to manipulate him, and he'll be one of the people that actually is like, oh no, I, he realizes they're bad. You know what I mean? Because mm. the first civ uh, through time, because this happened obviously before Ezio and Altair and everybody, the first civilization through time, it was like the first time they were really successfully doing something. You know what I mean? Like when they're getting to Ezio and getting to Desmond, they're like, okay, now it's working. Okay, now this is the plan coming together. Whereas if you go back in time, I feel like the best story route to go by is they can't use him in the past when we know in the future of time mm. is when they successfully go through with the plan at least juno does and minerva tries to i feel like they're gonna try to talk to him and contact him for whatever reason and he's actually gonna see through them yeah that makes sense that would make I, sense because of his character as well i actually think to... that's why he forms the brotherhood you know what i mean mm. it's based yeah, on a sense. fight against them and against the injustices and the control that these someone like juno wants you know what i mean then the yeah. brother formed in in opposition to Juno, not just the Templars. Yeah, that makes sense. Because well, I, I mean, think like he's gonna. Be, I think as he finds pieces of Eden, as he finds temples and learns more about the first Civ, I think he's gonna more realize that Juno or whoever the first. I, I'd assume it's Juno because she's the evil one, is trying to manipulate yeah. him to do what she wants for something that could destroy the world or like you know conquer the world or whatever or i mean i don't know if Bayek even understands the world at this point egypt i guess he thinks is <laughs> the whole planet um but you know i think yeah i think it makes sense that he'd be fighting against juno or against the first seven through creating his brotherhood the templars would also be created as you know an opposing would faction. that would that also in turn make sense of why maybe Desmond's son leaves the instruments of the first will? Because you'd have to think he's not actually going to help her the whole time mm. through his storyline in the modern day. He actually sees what's wrong with her through this journey. That's true. I mean, it could, but then Juno would surely remember leaving these messages for Bike and go, you know what, I don't want my main guy, you know, to... Maybe she thought, but maybe in some sense she thought she has him brainwashed enough that it won't affect him. Maybe. I mean, yeah, no, maybe I mean, she get like, arrogant, it's... like... That's true because um, I was reading up on the wiki. Um, it was who's like who's like the main Templar person that's kind of involved with Juno. Is it Violet? It's not Violet de Costa. Is yeah, it, it is. Violet Costa is the one yeah, that yeah. brought them that brought the show. Uh, and she was talking to Juno about it, 
And Juno says, she, she, Violet's like, he's his father's son. He's going to betray us at some point. And Juno says, no, he won't. He's he's our eater. You know, he's not going to betray us at any point. He's already in so deep with us that, he, that there's no there's no mm. coming back. So Juno is quite arrogant at this point, quite sure that he's not going to go against them, whereas others are wary of him because obviously it's Desmond's son. And um, I this is that what this battle a, a is, war. right? This is what this in in a battle I think is because the fact that it is Desmond's son and it's Aida, there's going to be this in a battle. I think it's actually so interesting to actually play as a sage rather mm. than just see sages. It doesn't mean as much. I'm like, cool, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. But when it's like, oh no, it's Desmond's son. It's this good guy, but also Aida, this guy that's for Juno. It's kind of like, mm. you know, you see the arrogance of Juno and it makes sense that Juno would feel that way. But then there's this, you know, it's all because we. We know it's almost like two people in the body. It's not just Aida. And I think yeah. to see, um, you know, Bayek and all these other things, and it just adds to that and the intrigue of what this character could be and the types of, you know, personal growth he could go on himself. And do you think, though, the fact that these Juno events are going on, like it just makes more sense, obviously, that it's um, – are pretty much exactly the same as the way you see it in Syndicate, where Juno's access to the Animus, she's talking to the person in the Animus, not talking to Jacob or Evie. That's why I just think these Juno events will be like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean They'll just be riffs and things she 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 creates and or things like that. But what would they be? What kind of things would they be? I don't know. But I'm part, when I first saw it, part of me thought it'll be like uh, the World War One rift when Juno just speaks to you and her head's really big. Uh, in the sky, I think like the truth, a different, a different form of like the glyphs, the sixteen glyphs. I mean, I definitely like that. I, I mean, see, when I thought of it, I was like, yeah, this would be like the World War One shit. She's like, like teaching boring, him. She's but... like teaching him the truth, the but same yeah. way she did to sixteen. Maybe, same, yeah, maybe because remember, be like... 16, 16's an instrument of the first will. Sixteen? Oh, yeah, he is, isn't he? That's true. Yeah. Classic sixteen. He was manipulated, but I mean, I mean, in a way, Desmond kind of was as well. It wasn't until the very end that he was like, ah, oh, shit, fuck. So. But that's what I'm saying. Do you think that Desmond's son, as he's going through it, she's going to guide him? And these could be just like glyph-like things. They're not going to be the exact same as like the 16 glyphs, but these events will be mission structures to the reason they're there is to like – because they can't be major story elements because that would have to be in the actual main story. Mm -hmm. These side activities will be things like she's teaching him about the world Mm. and history and his role in it. And so that's what she's doing there within the game. And then you've got the main narrative, at least in terms of Desmond's son, is he's going to be there to help Juno out and actually help her escape and do what she wants. But in that journey, he will discover the real shit that is Juno and her plans. Yeah, because I always thought it'd be interesting to have, you know, discover a, a, the a points in the game, have Juno tr- trying to talk to Desmond's son, but also have Desmond coming through in the grey trying to talk to his son. And then there's kind of like this power struggle for you know, which one is going to be able to break through to Desmond or Aita to be able to, you know, so what's going on. Because I think, I think that Desmond's son is the furthest to Aita that a sage has ever been at this point. Because I think most yeah. sages are kind of very torn. It's not until they die that they realize who they are. Like, when you see Roberts die, he, like, kind of says all this stuff to, like, you know, Juno, my beloved, or whatever. Uh, and then you've got uh Germain, who didn't even know, really know anything until the very end when he died and he was talking to arno in whatever the fuck was yeah. going on there and he kind of talked about it yeah. talked about the symbols and everything um and there was that so i mean john from it yeah sure i guess kind of but like desmond's son the way but like at that it's point, going juno has enough information that she's actually co- being able to contact them directly you know what i mean mm. whereas juno wasn't able to contact the others where she was able to contact john <clears throat> yeah that's true yeah that's I mean, it. the thing is, Desmond's son has, like, such a high concentration of first of DNA, DNA as well, being Desmond's son. And he's yeah, also yeah. a sage. So he has, so... yeah, he has incredibly high first of DNA then. He's because like the closest yeah. to Aita that we've ever seen, really. Yeah, the closest to the first Civ he's got, yeah. I mean, imagine, yeah, I suppose him controlling pieces of Eden would be pretty powerful. Because yeah. Desmond did a good job with it, and he had, what was it, like, point, what was it, point six percent first of DNA? Which is oh, high so for a human. Uh, uh, and I think sages have uh, six to eight percent first of DNA. So yeah. there's that. Um, just a little point. Well, it's, of why, fact, it's like we've talked. It's like we've talked about. That's why we can go back um, even further to somewhere like Egypt with yes, um, greater, with greater clarity. You know the way you can explain it with the Sanskrit one. It's only like eleven hundred, not eleven ninety one. 
but they have to skip things. You know what I mean? It's like fast forwarding to a more recent memory. Whereas like you'd have Plus clarity Desmond that had, had a years ago. had a high civ DNA as well. So as, it's yeah, easier as well with Desmond to go further back, yeah. but and yeah, so, back to someone like ancient so Egypt. Yeah. Desmond's son. Mm. Yeah, it just makes a lot more sense. So yeah, yeah, that's really interesting though. Um, that's intriguing to me. Is that sort of stuff? If that's the route they're going with the modern day, which it, it looks like it is, it just makes sense, right? It's is it how I think it's amazing to finally be at a point where we're talking about the modern day, where it's mm. you know there's real, really something there. Yeah, there's a I mean, what yeah, yeah. day shit were we talking about with Black Flag and Unity and Syndicate? We was like we were just like, well, what will they do? Hopefully something good. That's like the yeah, best yeah, do. that was it. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hope, hope it something good. Because I remember like where well where this <laughs> podcast came really from. Really good modern day coming yeah. soon. Oh god, coming more <laughs> information coming in the summer. It's gonna be really good. Yeah, sure is. With Syndicate, uh, it wasn't even a hope it's something good. It's just I hope it fucks nah, off. Like, <laughs> like, hope it's not yeah, there. Like, yeah. so um, Syndicate was just right. Okay, this is too late in development. Let's throw it out and then revise it for the next time. That was literally what it was. Yeah. Yeah.